This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 Advanced Tutorial. That's right, we're going to take it up a level for all of my intermediate to advanced viewers out there. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about the Ken Burns effect. Now the Ken Burns effect, as you're probably all aware, is the look where you'll have still images that are having, you know, the camera look like they're slowly zooming in or slowly panning across them. And believe it or not, we do have a tool at our disposal inside of Media Composer to create this very effect. And of course, I'm talking about the Avid Pan and Zoom tool. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you how simple it is to create a very basic Ken Burns effect sequence. And I guarantee that when you've got still images to add to your timeline, you're going to go back to this effect every time. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's Command and Tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And what I need to do is I need to create a sequence to do my pan and zoom or my Ken Burns effect. And to create this sequence, since I normally take the effect and I'll apply it to a blank video track, in this case, I'm actually going to need to drop a clip in here to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come to my motocross footage here. Let's just find a clip that's relatively long here. We'll need it to be about, uh, sure, why not about 15 seconds. I'm simply going to take that. We'll just drop it into a bin here. We'll drop it into yellow sequences. And in yellow sequences, we'll just call this pan and zoom. Okay, and now what we can do with the pan and zoom is we can apply it to an actual clip if we want to, or we can actually apply it to a blank layer, you know, that happens to be anywhere in our timeline. Now, if I was to apply it to the actual clip itself, of course, I could have, you know, a colored background. Let's say it was a, uh, a portrait picture that we had a bit of pillar boxing. I could actually set that pillar boxing to be an actual color, or I could have it be the video that the effect has been applied to. Now, in this case, I really don't want to see this video in behind, so we're just going to apply it to a blank layer of video. So, Command and 8 on the Mac, Control and 8 on Windows to open the effects palette. And you can find the Avid Pan and Zoom tool right down here in Image. And of course, it's not Pan and Zoom, it is Avid Pan and Zoom. So you're going to find it right at the top of the Image section of the Effects palette. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it, like I said, and I'm just going to drag and drop it down onto this empty track. And what we can actually do once I have it there is I can just bring this down and put it on Video Layer 1. Because like I said, I don't really care what's going to be going on in the background because my Pan and Zoom images are going to fill the whole frame. Okay. So we've got this uh, clip now that's 15 seconds long. What I'm going to do is just divide it up into three clips. So what we're going to do is just jump down five seconds. I'm going to add an edit right here. I've got add edit mapped on my keyboard to be F6. And let's just do it again. So basically we now have three clips that are going to go. Let me just hide mini composer here with these three images. And of course, I always pick the images that I know that I have the rights to. And these are from my wedding. There we go. My beautiful wife Paula there. Very nice. Okay, now what I've done is I've set this up so that what we can do is we can go from a portrait picture to a landscape picture and then back to a portrait picture again. But of course, we are using pan and zoom. It is going to function like a camera so we can really set these moves up however we want. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to command and tab back into Media Composer and let me actually just get rid of the picture there behind. There we go. And let's come down to our first clip. And once I have the time bar over top of the clip, I'm simply going to step into effects mode. Shift and Y is my shortcut. Of course, you can always find a shortcut to effects mode right here at the top of your timeline. And you'll see now that I have the effects editor open and all of the parameters for Avid Pan and Zoom at my disposal. Now, first and probably most important, where is this image that I'm going to import? So I'm just going to bring in one of these portrait pictures here. Sure, why don't we start with this one, okay? I'm simply going to say open, and as soon as I do, the image is going to appear in my timeline. Now, if I was just to leave this exactly the way that it is, you'll see that I can switch from source to target. That's basically what the image is going to look like. It's just going to sit there. So conceivably, you could basically get in, and I could actually import all the pictures that I want and arrange them in whatever order I want to arrange them in right off the bat before I even get started. So let's just find the last one here. There we go. Say open. 
We're switching from source to target because we don't want to do any animation once we switch it over to target here because it's actually going to give us the end result of our camera moves. Okay, so you see, we've just got the images here, but of course this is a pan and zoom effect. So we want to get in and do some panning and zooming. So what I want to do is I'm going to step back into effects mode. I'm going to switch back over to source so that I can actually see the frame. Now you'll see that with the frame being viewable, what I can now do, and I'm just going to come back to the beginning of the clip, is I can actually come back to the effects editor and we can start to do our pan and zoom. I can zoom in and I can see what is going to be visible inside my frame because I have a visual representation of it right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the first move up and it's just going to be a very slow tilt up. Maybe right about like that. Okay, so we're going to start there. What we're going to do is we're going to add a keyframe for position. So I'm going to right click. We're going to say add keyframe. And what we want to do, we also want to make sure that I'm not a big fan of easing in and easing out when I do my pan and zooms, but you see I do have the option of ease in and ease out. I can also have a linear uh, movement of my camera or I can have a constant movement. I'm just going to switch my velocity to be linear for both the in and the out. So let's come down to the end. We're going to add a, another keyframe position here for, uh, for the position parameter. And all I'm going to do is just move this up just a little bit above my head. The reason being is I'm going to add a dissolve in at the end of this shot. So I want to make sure that it passes a little bit past the top of my head as the transition is happening. Okay, if I was satisfied with this, what I could do is simply step back, I could switch to target mode, and I would see exactly what is going on with my pan and zoom. Now something I do want to point out, a couple other parameters that I want to point out here, and the first one right down here is to show the safe action. Let me just switch back to my source view for a second here. You'll see that if I disable that, I'm actually losing the inside action safe right there. Now of course the edge of the uh, the sort of the heads up display here is of course the edge of the picture. So keep that in mind. Now the couple other parameters that I do want to point out of course we talked about the velocity with the uh, the in to be linear, ease in or constant as well as the out. You can also get in and adjust the path to be linear or spline. And you remember I talked earlier about how you know conceivably I could have the image just sitting over top of video or sitting over top in this case just to be sort of pillar boxed. I can also get in and of course change the background color to be whatever I want. In this case it happens to be black. If I wanted to adjust it I could, but of course we've added the animation in so I really don't need to do that. Of course you can also get in and tell pan and zoom that you have, uh, that your source has square pixels and of course what the levels are, whether they are RGB or 601, as well as getting in and freeing the current cache or all caches and also of course telling the effect whether the render mode will be progressive. But you know what, I'm done with this first shot, so let me actually just switch back to be target here. And I just want to make sure that I do move off the frame a little bit. I think that's good right till about there. Let's just come in, let's do the exact same thing to my next shot here. What we want to do, of course, is we want to step into effects mode. And let's just zoom in a little bit here. We'll just come back to the start of the shot. Let's just zoom in. We want to make sure, of course, that we're not in target mode, we're in source mode. I want to zoom in a little bit because I want to do a pan across. So let's just zoom in a little bit more. I still want to see a bit of the car. And we'll just sort of start about there. And remember, of course, we want to set these to be linear. So let's add a keyframe for our position. And we're going to come right down to the end. And I could probably punch in 162. It's probably going to be pretty close. That's actually very good. I like that. So let's switch back to our target. We'll just drag through. What I should have done here, of course, is I should have added that keyframe. There we go. Let's do that again here. Add keyframe. There we go. 162, like such. We now have that move happening. Very nice. Okay, of course, I can switch back to target mode. There we go. All these are looking really good. Last but certainly not least, we'll take the shot of my wife here. And let's just actually do a little bit of a push in on her with the flowers. Now, of course, again, I am in target mode, so we're just going to switch to source mode. Sometimes it's actually easier to see things in target mode. I do want to see a bit of my wife's flowers there. And what I'm going to do is just a very, very slow zoom in here. Very slow. Let's just put this to a factor of, I don't know, maybe seven. That's pretty good. Now, of course, we want to make sure, again, we add those keyframes in. 
So what we're going to do is set our zoom factor here to be 7. There we go. And we'll just adjust the positioning here just a little bit up. It's looking good. Of course, let's switch back to target view. Now, of course, what's important to keep in mind is that your uh, image of quality will only be as good as the original image. Now, my file sizes are pretty big. It's actually looking very nice. Now, of course, what I see going on there is the fact that I didn't switch this to be linear. So let's just do that. There we go. Very nice. Okay. So there we go. Nice, smooth movement there. Okay, so now I'm ready to get in and just add my dissolves in. So all I'm going to do is simply add an in point and an out point before that first cut and after the last cut. Let's put our dissolve in. Ah, sure, why don't we leave it as 30 frames? And I'm going to apply that to all transitions into out. So what I now have, if I come back and I hit play, is a very cool Ken Burns pan and zoom effect that didn't cost me any extra money to purchase the effect because it comes standard inside of Avid Media Composer. Now, something that I do want to point out is that anybody that's coming from pre-version 8, so if you had version 7 and you purchased the Symphony option, you have access to Boris Continuum Complete 8 that also has an excellent pan and zoom effect inside of that plugin package as well that has a few extra bells and whistles to definitely make it worth checking out. Okay, so I hope you see that the Avid Pan and Zoom tool is a fantastic tool for you to quickly get in and create very cool Ken Burns style Pan and Zoom effects really in no time flat. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.